If you're feeling a little bit stiff and you uh, want to improve your flexibility but you don't have a lot of time on your hands to really dedicate to a specific mobility or, or, or stretching program, but really good news for you. I've got three simple stretches that you can do that are going to improve your flexibility and be better for your running. I'm also going to go through these one by one with you and I'm going to explain why everything else isn't actually really necessary. Later on I'm also going to explain two very important points that you need to take into consideration while you're doing these, these stretches to really get the most out of them. The first of these is called the world's greatest stretch. I promise that's not our name for it. We didn't come up with this. That's actually what it's called. Why the stretch is effective is that it's really uh, all round kind of mobility. It involves a lot of hip flexors, hamstrings, uh, a little bit of rotational mobility and, and, and stability as well as some upper body um, uh, rotation and, and stability as well. All right, step by step, how to do the world's greatest stretch. You're going to start with your right foot forward and your left knee on the ground. You want to move that left knee a little bit away from the right foot so you are getting a nice stretch on that hip flexor. At this point, you're also going to have your left hand in line with your right foot, but with enough sort of space in between, about a half an arm's width in between. With that left knee on the, on the ground, that is going to be the initial starting point for you with this, with this mobility uh, exercise. As we progress, you want to be able to get that left knee off the ground, but on condition that you're not piking your, your bum in the air. You want to still have a nice sort of straight body as you, as you go through it. From there, you're going to take your right elbow and you're going to try and reach that right elbow down to the inside of your right ankle. It's really, really important that as you're doing this, you're not leaning your body forward or your knee over your toes. You want to have good, good pressure on your heel at this point in time. And you also really, really don't want your front leg to lean over to the side like the Leaning Tower of Pisa as well. As you take that elbow down to the inside of the right ankle, you hold it there for one to two seconds. And then from there, you reach your hand up into the sky, but do it in a nice deliberate way by reaching your elbow, then your hand, and make sure that your eyes follow to the ceiling so you're getting some really good torso rotation at this point. The biggest mistake people make here is this is where their front leg opens up a bit, and you want to keep that front leg nice and upright and not have any kind of leaning tower of Pisa um, going on at that point. From there, you're going to hold that hand up as, as well for one to two seconds, and we repeat that five times. Once you've done your five times, we took, move to the left side, so your left foot forward, your right hand in line with your left foot, and your right knee on the ground, and again, repeat the process. So why is the world's greatest stretch a really important mobility exercise for runners? Firstly, as runners, if you have very poor hip flexion and extension, right? So, so hip flexion, hip extension, if you have poor hip flexion and extension, you're going to compensate for that somewhere else. Your pelvis is probably going to be rotating or you're also going to probably get some pain within the lower back. And that is really what we don't want that. The body is a chain, right? So if something isn't working in one area, it's going to move somewhere else. So if you, you're compensating for tight hips, might move down to the knees and the feet and you might be picking up injuries in those areas as well. The other reason why we want to have good hip mobility is with that increased range of motion you're going to allow yourself to have a better uh, stride um, and, and better cadence so that you're able to, to generate more force and power with every step that you take. The second of these three mobility exercises is what we call knee drops. Now this is a really really important exercise because it focuses on the internal and the external rotation of the hip socket. It's also a really, really good exercise because it's working on the entire hip girdle and in particular a little bit around the, the piriformis area and this is important and, and I'm sure as runners you would have heard tight piriformises can, can lead to injury and we don't want to have a tight and a weak piriformis so we really want to get some good mobility in around the entire hip girdle. Step by step, how do we do these knee drops? So you're going to be seated with your knees bent, your feet are going to be wider than your hips or shoulder width apart. So just moving those feet slightly wider than your hips and you really want to have your feet anchored down. The very important part here is you want to have good posture as well. You don't want to be sitting with your rounded shoulders and so if, it, if you need help with that, the first step of this exercise is to use your fingertips just behind you to really allow you to get that chest pushing forward. From there you can start progressing that in bringing your fingertips closer and closer to you and eventually if you can do it with your hands up in the air that'll be amazing. And in this position, what you're going to now do is to try and drop both knees down to the ground, trying to get the one knee in line with the, the other heel, but not compensating. So not extending up in the, in, the, in the hip and making sure that those bum bones stay down on the ground. Then gently up to the other side, 
drop those knees down and this is a slow controlled movement we don't want to just sort of be flopping the legs up and down doing it nice and slowly with good control and no compensation within the hip girdle we want to be aiming for around eight to ten repetitions on each side here but build yourself up slowly really important never sacrifice your technique for increased repetitions how is this exercise going to improve your running Again, one of the main things here is that a tight hip girdle doesn't give you the range of motion to move your hips in the way that running requires. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the piriformis is, is, comes into play here. And so if we have a, a weak piriformis, that has an injury risk. But a tight and a weak piriformis is really a big injury risk. So we want to create flexible or, or mobile hips so that we're able to get into the right positions for running. And that helps with power um, generation and force generation and also helps you to prevent injuries so you're not compensating anywhere else along the chain. All right, the third of the mobility exercises that, that are so effective for runners is what we call the deep squat reach. Why is this, this exercise effective? Again, it's, it's a little bit of an all-round mobility, but it really focuses in and around the hips, focusing on hip mobility as well as ankle mobility and very, very much so some postural mobility and stability as well. You'll see in this exercise that we do a lot of opening up of the chest. And for those of us who sit at a computer all day and have very rounded shoulders, this is a very, very effective exercise to help your running and your daily life as well. You're going to get yourself into a squat position, but I would like your feet to be wider than your usual squat position. So a little bit wider than, than hip or shoulder width, also having your toes slightly pointed out. And if you really are struggling with the depth, you can move your feet a little bit wider. From here, you're gonna go into a nice deep squat. Uh, you're going to then try and keep your chest facing up. I don't mind if there's a little bit of rounding in, in your back. And here, you're gonna use your elbows to push out your knees. That you'll feel a nice little mobility in, in, in the hip girdle, a bit of a stretch in the groin area, and that is perfect. Holding that position from there, you're then going to put one hand on the floor and reach the other hand up to the sky with some really nice rotation. So again, use your eyes to follow so that you're getting some nice torso rotation and not just flinging the hand up. And then come back into that starting point where you have your elbows pointing out and then rotate. Other hand down to the floor, reaching the other hand up to the sky, rotating nicely in the torso and opening up that chest. Um, and we repeat this between eight to 10 times on each side. And if you are struggling, if you can't manage that, you start in, a, in, in the sort of position where you can do it as for as long as your quads can handle until you can get up to a, a eight to 10 repetitions on each side. As with the previous two exercises, again, this is focusing around the hips. And because, because the body is a chain, we just don't want to compensate somewhere else and not have the mobility in that area and refer down the chain or up the chain. We also want to ensure that if we are if we are tight in the in the hip region that we are not having a rotational aspect happening in the pelvis because when that happens you lose force production moving forward and backwards running is a linear sport and any kind of rotation that's happening within the pelvis is really going to a slow you down and b put you at risk of injuries the really nice thing about this stretch as well is that it's got an upper body component to it which is going to help with your posture not only for your daily life but again in your running world as well because if we have a posture that is rounded you're going to also have that rotational component and fatigue a lot quicker than you normally would. I mentioned earlier that there were two key points to, to doing the, all three of these exercises and the first is that don't rush through the repetitions. Faster does not equal better. In actual fact, when, with each repetition, you want to be able to push yourself a little bit further and a little bit further in that rep. Remember guys, we're trying to increase the range of motion here, but in a stability around a joint. So faster isn't better. And secondary to that is never sacrifice your technique of the, the movements for increased range of motion or more repetitions or again, the speed. So focus on those two things and you guys will get these down to a T. Knowing these three stretches and actually doing them is one thing. But if you really want to improve your running, you need to be focusing on this one thing that perhaps is holding you back. So go and watch this video to uncover the secrets on how to become a stronger runner.